Here's a picture of one of these shipping containers from Rackable, one of the companies that makes them. Uh, here's inside one of these containers. Here again is our fourth generation data center. And you just package everything in smaller units. Your shipping container comes with everything, the cooling, the networking, and um, the covering, so that they actually do not, they, they're completely modular. So this allows you to build in a much easier fashion scalable data centers. Here's an actual, another picture of this, showing how it's arranged. And um, here's the actual, where your um, shipping containers will plug in. Here's another picture of the Microsoft um, deployment across the across the globe, and um, these ones here are con content distribution nodes. They're small nodes for the getting the final answer to the users, and the, uh, the these things here are the actual um, major data centers. Here's some comments, on which I already started on the green clouds. And cloud centers have put a lot of, people building cloud centers have put a lot of effort into finding out how to make them more efficient. And that actual effort has gone into other uh, centers, which are now also much more efficient than they used to be. Um, in a good cloud, there's an important quantity called uh, power usage efficiency, PUE. And that's the total facility power over the IT equipment power. So this is IT equipment power is the power you really need just to run your CPUs and disks and things like that, and your networks, network uh, routing, uh, routing uh, nodes. So you have to have the IT equipment power at a minimum, uh, but if you put in all the other things you need, the uh, microwave for the system admins, the cooling, etc., you're going to have need more power. So this ratio of PUE is sort of a measure of efficiency. In days gone by, if you looked at that, it was actually around three. Now, uh, at least in uh, a, few, a couple of years ago, it was 1.8, and clouds are in the range 1.1 to 1.2. And here is a link you can go to find out more about those fourth generation data centers with the improved um, power efficiency. It's rather difficult to find out how large everything is because um, the companies don't tell you, because it's a proprietary secret. Um, in, there was a paper I found which uh, Somehow it managed to reverse engineer people's statements into measurements of sizes. And um, however, that paper from 2010, so it's probably off some factor of two or something by now. And that in those days, there were 30 million servers around the world, and Google had almost a million servers, so that's three percent of the worldwide server population. Google had 200 megawatts of power used uh, by those a million servers. And um, that was around one, less than 1% 1 of the total power used in data centers. So they had 3% of the systems and used 1% of the power. That's the difference between a PUE of around one to a PUE of three. It's worth noticing that uh, Google used around 0.01% of the total power used on anything worldwide. Um, clouds are presumably a growing fraction of the world's server population, 20, 30 percent. It's a little difficult to estimate um, how, because I think Amazon, Google, Microsoft, the large cloud uh, companies do not clearly publish the size of their systems. You can compare that with uh, well-known high-performance computing systems. One of the largest, uh, the largest system today, uh, just uh, recently, is a Chinese system built around the Intel mic chip. Uh, before that, one of the top supercomputers was the Blue Gene Q, that was the best about a year ago in 2012, summer 2012. That was 16 petaflops. 
and it had about a million ch chips with 1.6 million cores and uh, say 1.6 petabytes of memory and 96 racks, and it used eight megawatts of power. And at that time, which has now increased the uh, the cloud data center increased, you had 30 megawatts of power in a, in the largest cloud data center and maybe 100,000 servers. Um, so it's worth noticing the world's biggest SIPIN computer is um, around 1, 1%, 2% of the total power of uh, the cloud computing systems. And Google is around already has some 10 times uh, the um, capability of the top supercomputer. And these numbers are clearly off by factors of two or probably four. But let me give you an idea as to what's going on. And we have a world where the largest supercomputer is perhaps 1% of the total server power. We have an individual cloud vendor with 10% of that computer, that total world power. And the total clouds are probably now 30 or maybe even 40% of the total computer server power. Here's another slide from, uh, from a different talk on um, data centers versus supercomputers. So an earlier one before the Sequoia machine came out. It compares with the Blue Waters machine, um, the intended Blue Waters machine, which was uh, 40K servers. And that at the time compared to a big cloud center with 100K eight core servers. And it was worth noticing the difference of the networking, the supercomputer used in Finiband with low latency, high bandwidth um, protocols. The data center was IP based and is optimized not for internal networking, but for internet access. Um, the uh, Data centers used memcache, disk on the node, and nearby uh, blob storage. The supercomputers had separate data farms, and they used parallel file systems like GPFS or Lustre. So there are some important to notice there's different optimizations between cloud data centers and supercomputers, because supercomputers are being optimized to take a single job or a few jobs and run them as uh, with the different nodes of the uh, supercomputer working together on the same job. And that requires low latency in many types of applications. In the case of a data center, it's really optimized for many jobs. If they are running on the same, those jobs are running for the same problem as they are, for instance, in, in Google search applications or, or Bing applications. That optimization is a much looser coupling and is not network dominated. It's actually probably dis the search is probably dis dominated. And so you just need to, at some level, they're the same. Data centers and supercomputers are the same. Their computers and disks and networks are all linked together. But the optimization are pretty different because the application aimed at are pretty different. 